The, um, by the way, I was putting the plant in today. The cast of Bugs Life's moved in. <laughs> <laughs> no! Look, what? there's ants. Flying ants. Dead spider. Why do you always get ants in here? You never have food in here, though. There is a Stella can in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> This video is dedicated to the dead drunk spider. Oh, isn't that a lovely background? Sure. So today, I'm going to tell you about weird things that happened on Britain's Got Talent. There is weird stuff that went on. I lost my virginity. There's a story. How I lost my virginity to Simon Cowell. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing that... This is painful for you, isn't it? Like going back into the past. I remember with a small oak fields. Every time I got on camera, whether it was like in the pre-auditions when they're like interviewing you, or you're actually walking out on stage in front of the audience, I had the overwhelming, desirable thing to want to swear. Just every time in my mind was like, don't swear, don't swear, don't swear. They were asking me the question, was I listening? No, because all I was saying was don't swear. I just wanted to say hugs. The semi-finals. I remember standing there, watching me do Lorraine on the screen, looking at the judges, seeing Amanda Holden and David Williams sit there and like the whole audience, like a good 15 meters away and thinking, just don't swear. I walked on stage with a chicken leg in my hand and was like, just don't swear. All I kept thinking was, you know, when Davina's like, this is channel four, please do not swear. I think it's just because you know that you can't. So you're like, I could. The second really weird thing that happened to me on Britain's Got Talent is when I actually got through. I do that weird like seagull run. That wasn't scripted or? No, I literally ran out like a turd. <laughs> a turd escaping down the U-bend. I am confusion. What was going through your mind when you were doing I just saw colors. <laughs> I just remember looking at them and they'd be like, you're through it. And I was like, and then I ran out. I don't know what I'm doing. And I did this. And then I remember just seeing like Ant and Deck and being like, what am I going to do in the semi-finals? And they were like, well, well done. And I was like, yeah, but what am I going to do? After you get through, you meet a stylist. Fashion. I don't know how to dress. Obviously, you can tell from my audition. I was wore a cropped blazer that was, I'm pretty sure it was women's from ASOS. And my jeans were from Primark. I tucked myself in. I'm not three going to school. So I got a stylist and they were like, I'm going to be taking you around the shops to buy what you want for the semi-finals and final. And I was like, what? So we went to London for a day and went shopping and we walked into Topshop. She was like, you can pick anything you want. And I was like, where's the most expensive thing in this store? Gucci. And she was like, yeah, so you're going to have to like buy something for the semi-final and also the final in case you get through because obviously there's like a week between the shows. They even bought your socks and even your underwear. She bought my pants. She was like, these Calvin Klein's are really nice. I was like, why do you want to wear my pants? Okay. You don't see my pants. I don't get naked on stage. Oh, really? Well, in my original piece, I wanted to rip off trousers. I was like, I want to go full out. I want rip off trousers with Velcro down the side. Or like strippers. Yeah. And I wanted like gold, stupid hot pants that said like BDT on my bum. Do you know what they did? They took my idea and they gave it to someone else. Because the guy that used to dance around with a nun in his yeah. semi-final piece, that's what he had. And they went, oh, we don't really want to do that with you. I thought it was funny. I was like, yeah, what well, rippable pants, like, Whoa. I remember watching it and being like, I had that idea and now someone else is doing it. Was that the same season? Two same years? show, same night. Anyway. But he didn't get through. Neither did I. <laughs> My final piece, I was going to wear like all gold. <laughs> I remember saying to her as a 21 year old man, like, yeah, for the final, I want to wear all gold. Oh yeah, I was going to look like a bloody Oscar. I'm kind of glad I didn't get that far because I would have looked like a glowing beam of dick. Come on, but every time you buy anything, it never fits you. It's because my body is like a skeleton with Play-Doh stuck on it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, that's Philip Green. <laughs> The next weird thing that happened to me on Britain's Got Talent was the fact that I had a coin with a cork in my pocket the whole time. So it just was like my 21st birthday and we were doing panto. We had champagne. I took the cork 
apparently it's good luck to cut the top of the cork and put a 50p in it. And I was like, this is good luck for me. This is good luck. And every night <laughs> I slept with it under my pillow. <laughs> and then I got like the call to go on Brit Scott's Talent. And I was like, this is the corks doing. And every night I would rub it. <laughs> oh no, this is so cringy. I took the cork with me and it's actually in my blazer pocket through the first audition. I'm surprised it didn't fly out and like knock Commander Holden out. Even during the deliberation, it was in my back pocket. And I don't know if you can see from the photo, but my hand was in my back pocket the whole time, like rubbing it. And then they said I'm through and I was like, this is the cork. And then on the day of the semi-finals, I woke up and I remember the taxi coming to get me and I was in a fluster and I forgot the cork. I remember sitting in the car, looking out the window like Duffy in Warwick Avenue when she's like sad in the taxi. And I forgot it. And there, right there, but I was like, I'm not gonna get through because I don't have the cork. So that's why I didn't get through, not because my piece was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly turned around to the taxi driver and was like, turn back, I need my cork. But along with superstition, the next really weird thing that happened to me is the jacket I was wearing on the semi-finals, I presumed to be bad luck. Every time I wore that jacket, after Britain's Got Talent, bad things happened to me. I remember being in the, like, in a club somewhere and I am 100% sure that, 99% sure that I was spiked because I had one drink and I have never thrown up spaghetti bolognese that bad. It was like chunks in the taxi. Do you know what you should do? Doggy bags. Put it around your ears like a horse's muzzle in a taxi. Isn't that the best invention? A sick bag for taxis. How light is your vomit? Your ears can hold it up. Every time I went and did a gig with that on, I had a bad gig. I mean, it's nothing to do with me and my content, is it? It's got to do with the jacket. <laughs> and then I threw it out and things got better. Another weird thing. I had the most awkward haircut. They're like, okay, so you're gonna go and see the makeup artist and the hairdressers now. And I'm like, what? I was like, I didn't authorize this. Uh, uh, uh. Where they used to film in London, they had a full on like salon in there. I sat down, I was so nervous anyway, I was ready to poo my pants. We had like five hours before we were going on air. I didn't tell them what I wanted. They just cut my hair. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. What? Yeah, they cut my hair. But you didn't get a say? I didn't get a say. But they styled it like that. No, that was me in my first audition. Bearing in mind, it was really nice at the start of the day, yeah. but then when 11 hours had passed and I went out, it looked dishevelled and flat. You waited 11 hours? For the first audition, yeah. I think they actually caught, cut it quite short. It was definitely, I remember them using those bloody scissors that hurt. You know, like the thinning scissors? Mm. That are like, <laughs> those ones. They <laughs> yank them out and I'm like, oh. And it was really awkward because I was trying to make conversation with the hairdresser. A slight I didn't exist. He was just talking to someone else the whole time. And like, I felt really, I remember feeling really awkward and being like, I always get really bad anxiety. Actually, I don't suffer with anxiety. It comes really easily to me. It was like probably on a picture that they were like, this is what his hair needs to look like. Well, being asked to go on daytime TV and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You walk into ITV. It's literally like taped up, held up by a coat hanger. And it's eerily quiet. I remember walking backstage to go on Lorraine and being like, oh my God, that's Lorraine Kelly. And I, I walked on and sat down and they were speaking to me and I was like, Yes. And it's not like, action, okay, switch on, now you can do that. Because obviously I'm not gonna be like, at like seven o'clock in the morning. And they're speaking to you like, you did a really good job there, didn't you? And you're like, yes, I did. So tell us more. Yeah, well, I was there and, okay, thanks for joining us. Next, we're gonna be doing this. You're like, was that it? I was on with Lorraine, Louis, Alid Jones, and then that guy that does the weather. Fit. Two of the people I do impressions of. Was it awkward? Yes. Who's the most awkward person that you've met that you've done an impression of? The most awkward impression was doing Anna Ferris to Chris Pratt, knowing that they just split up and I didn't know. I met Chris Pratt and I was like, oh, I do an impression of your wife. And he was like, oh, 
and did the impression. And then like three months later, it was like in the news that they'd split up. He was very kind. I have pictures. <laughs> and I tell you what's so weird. It's like, I was watching the news in the morning on like before they do Lorraine, they have the news. I remember like, being like, that lady, then she walks into the make, like I was there. And then the next minute I'm at the studio and she walks in and I'm like, I just watched you on the telly. And she's like, yes. They're just like talking and bantering with the makeup lady. And I'm just sitting there like. <laughs> if I went back, I would have been an absolute dick on telly. <laughs> oh yeah, you type in Philip Green. It's like net worth 15 million pounds. I'm like, yeah, where? <laughs> Here is some waffle about spiders. Do you remember that giant spider you found behind the green screen? You should have charged that Ooh, hey. <laughs> When there are spiders in here, I'm out. This is what I've discovered. Any spider that is outside, fine, have your life, live it. Any spider that comes inside and walks across the floor like it's no man's business, get out. It's fine if they're on the wall. Why? But it's those wolf spiders. You know the ones that like, just decide at like, I don't know, like 12 o'clock at night to be like, oh, I'm coming in the room. Yeah, no, I can't. Army style out from nowhere. Yeah, and like then you're like, there it is, I see it, don't move. <laughs> <laughs> My friend was living in, I think she was living in Saudi Arabia. She was in the shopping mall and she like was eating her food with her family and she looked up. It was like a glass ceiling. And she was like, why is there a glove? on the ceiling. We live in Saudi Arabia, why would there be a glove? And then it moved. I would have been like, get me the flight out of here, see ya. See ya. Well, any spider that wants to call on me needs to get consent. The birdie ones, but do you know what I mean? There's... A spider's just scorpions without the tail. Like if I cut the tail off, right at the back of the, where the legs no, were. Pincers for one. Yeah, get rid of them. They're, they're not important. They're, they're not. It looks suspiciously like a spider. But isn't like a lobster just a sea scorpion? There are weird things that happen on Britain's Got Talent. If you enjoyed this video, so start again without the burp in the back. Yeah. <laughs> if you like this video, then click subscribe. Don't do that. I am fake. I don't even know if people click the bell anymore, do they? I, I don't upload regularly, so you it never might. know. Yeah, it might actually help you more than me. And uh, comment below. And let me know weird things that happen to you on Brits Got Talent. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have weird superstitions that have happened to them or they have? Whether it's a blanket that every time you wear it, you go invisible. <laughs> Harry Potter. Anyway, enjoy. See you later. In Korea, apparently, it's rude to do this. When you want to beckon someone over, you do this. Really? Yeah. It's rude to show. And when you take something, you're meant to take it with both hands, not one hand. There's so much culture stuff, it's amazing. Anyway, subscribe. <laughs>